Elon Musk is a South African Canadian American businessman and billionaire. Well known for his eccentric mannerisms, grand visions of the future, and unique way of thinking atypical for ultra wealthy businessmen. Elon Musk is the CEO of Tesla, the electric car company, SpaceX, the space freighter company, Boring Co., the underground logistics company, and Neuralink the cyborg research company. All of these avenues have generated Elon Musk a considerable amount of wealth. While total wealth is hard to calculate, most estimates give him a net worth of roughly $93 billion, making Musk somewhere between the fifth and second richest man in the world, and the world's wealthiest African American. Some of Elon Musk's most well-known achievements include inventing reusable self-landing rockets, sending a car into space, owning one of the most successful electric car startups, co-founding the most used cash transfer app, obtaining a goth girlfriend, naming his child a Pizza Hut discount code, and pioneering high-speed VAC trains. It's no surprise that this activity has garnered Musk a wide amount of praise and support from the media or the public. Mostly Redditors though. However, his achievements may not be all that they seem, and while magic rockets or putting people on Mars is certainly quite cool, Elon Musk is possibly the most overrated person in the world right now. Here's why. The bulk of Elon Musk's wealth comes from Tesla, the electric car company. He didn't actually found the company, he was just one of the early investors who then bought out the founders and gave himself the title of founder. But that's fine, it's helping us to transition to electric cars and fight climate change, right? Wrong. Not only have they consistently been wrong about when they're going to make a car that anyone other than the super rich can afford, most models sell for nearly $80,000, but the cars themselves are just shoddy. 90% of Tesla cars shipped in 2017 had some sort of issue needing to be fixed, whether it was a leaky battery that Tesla knew would be dangerous as far back as 2012, or parts of the cooling system cobbled together with wood from Home Depot, or being unable to log into your car because of a coding error, thus preventing you from driving it. You can bypass the autopilot safety feature by wedging an orange or other round fruit into the steering wheel, leading to hilarious videos like this one where drivers are asleep at 70 miles per hour on the f***ing highway. The autopilot also disengages the moment before the car hits anything, so Tesla can always claim the driver was in control when the car crashes. Huh. Is Elon Musk and his team working towards fixing these issues? The man works up to 80 hours a week sometimes. No. His top priority is getting the onboard computer to play Minecraft and Monty Python videos. In 2016, Elon Musk founded The Boring Company after being stuck in traffic one day and wishing there was a better, faster alternative to get from A to B. The system Musk's team devised was an underground tunnel system, where users pay to get into a small car that moves along a fixed rail. Elon Musk called it safe, earthquake-proof tunnels under cities to solve traffic. If you're getting deja vu, it's because Elon Musk has just claimed to have invented the subway. An extremely inefficient subway, solely for Tesla users. In February 2019, the mayor of San Jose gave the boring company $800 million to dig a tunnel from San Jose Airport to San Jose train station. This distance is 8 minutes by car and roughly half an hour by public transport. Now I'm no economy expert, but I would like to think that you could improve that half hour bus ride with less than $800 million. And that's the perfect summary of Musk's business strategy. Although he's taking climate change more seriously than other corporate leaders, he just wants to ensure that he's the only one who can profit from the solution. And that solution just so happens to be everyone buying his car brand and riding in his tunnels. But at least there's SpaceX, right? Admittedly, some of SpaceX's stuff is really cool, and I commend the thousands of engineers that make it work. But other stuff is complete nonsense. Starting in 2018, SpaceX began launching the Starlink program, a fleet of thousands of satellites that orbit the Earth, providing internet connectivity to the people on the Earth below. 
This doesn't sound bad. What's the problem? It's going to ruin terrestrial astronomy. That's right, these satellites are made up of shiny metal coating, which means if you try to take a picture of a space with them in the way, your picture will be covered in horrible white streaks. In response to this criticism from the astronomer community, Musk promised that future satellites would be covered in a coat of paint, reducing reflectivity by 55%, and in the meantime, astronomers are just going to have to work around the problem. Except these satellites are controlled by artificial intelligence, and change course whenever they feel like it, so you can't really predict where they'll be at the time you want to take your pictures. Elon Musk also confirmed that when SpaceX finally puts humans on Mars in the 2030s, he will be ignoring Earth laws and implementing his own laws applying to the entire planet. I can't see anything that could possibly go wrong with any of that. Don't even get me started on the Neuralink stuff. Letting Elon Musk connect your brain to the internet can only go wrong. He's probably going to replace all of your childhood memories with the boot rom of a microwave as a joke. So far, the only thing Elon Musk has ever invented that has been a tangible improvement to the lives of everyday people is PayPal. But an Elon Musk defender, and Elon Musk himself on several occasions, might say that he has provided high paying jobs to thousands of workers to help feed their families. And you're probably right. But this also makes a good segue into the next section of... He made workers take mandatory overtime, he failed to provide adequate bathroom and lunch breaks to employees, he encouraged workers to work at unsafe machinery leading to higher rates of injury, he threatened to take away employee stock options if employees unionised, which is illegal, he fired an employee one day before he could obtain stock options, he denied injured workers medical care and forced them to take trips in the hospital in a taxi instead of calling an ambulance because he would have to pay for the ambulance. He didn't provide the required 60 day notice when laying off workers. Tesla factories don't have caution markers because Elon allegedly doesn't like the colour yellow. He overworks engineers up to 12 hours a day and his Tesla factories have three times more OSHA violations as the next 10 car factories in the US combined. You get the picture. Elon Musk treats his workers like crap. Elon Musk's personality is a mix between a 19th century evil railroad baron and that period of the internet when we said things like, take my upvote, you just won the internet today my good sir. If you follow Elon Musk on Twitter, you'll find very soon that his method of tweeting is uncommon for many billionaires. In between cool pictures of rockets and updates on Tesla cars, you'll occasionally find stolen memes, anime reviews, and unfunny phrases he thought were hilarious probably while smoking weed. This has earned him praise for being, ironically, very down to earth, because despite being a billionaire, he still enjoys the pastimes of the plebs, like memes, anime, and marijuana. To further cement his status among the 14 to 24 year old white guy demographic, at one point he appeared on the PewDiePie series Meme Review and got high on the Joe Rogan experience. But here's the thing, all Elon Musk does is take jokes from the dank meme subreddit, the most unfunny page on the entire internet, and funnel it directly onto his Twitter account, and he's considered a comedic genius for this. He tried to delist Tesla from the stock market at exactly $420 because it's the weed number. He released a rap song called R.I.P. Harambe in 2019. He bought stankmemes.com just to put a single picture of a meme on it. He sold branded shorts for $69.42. He changed the price of Tesla's flagship product to $69,420. The man who is sending us to Mars is nearly 50 years old and he still thinks the numbers 69 and 420 are funny. Two numbers I stopped finding funny when I turned 16 years old. Elon Musk's philanthropy usually falls into a similar pattern. Step 1. Pledge to help. Step 2. Enjoy the free publicity and media praise. Step 3. Don't actually do anything to help. Case in point. In 2018, 
12 junior football team members and their coach became trapped in a cave in northern Thailand while trying to escape torrential rain and flooding. Our philanthropist pal Elon Musk was willing to help out and instructed his top scientists to work on a child-sized submarine to transport the children through the flooded tunnels and away to safety. And while he was probably doing it for good publicity, the idea isn't that bad. Unfortunately, the head of the rescue operation, Mr Vernon Unsworth, saw right through this and said the submarine wouldn't help and that Elon Musk should just shove it up his ass. Elon Musk responded by calling the man a paedophile. Mr. Unsworth would later sue Musk for defamation. In fairness, if I was in an argument with a middle-aged British man living in Thailand, I would have called him a paedophile in under 10 seconds, and I imagine most of you would too. But at least I haven't been pictured with child sex trafficker Ghislaine Maxwell. Many people wondered what made Elon Musk, the man who once said very profound things about free will and destiny and the nature of existence, suddenly start calling people childish names. Maybe it's got something to do with Musk admitting on Twitter that he mixes sleeping drugs and alcohol, which can lead to brain damage, but who knows, it, it could be anything. During the coronavirus pandemic, Elon Musk peddled lies about the nature of the virus, predicting it would be over by April 2020. When that didn't happen, Elon Musk became a lockdown skeptic, pretending that shelter-in-place mandates wouldn't slow the spread of the virus, and the bloat would do to the economy would outweigh the benefits. What does Elon Musk have to gain from this? Because Texas, where Tesla is constructing a new factory, had shelter-in-place orders in effect. That means all non-essential work had to be halted, including construction. Just to be clear, Elon Musk encouraged people to ignore health experts and potentially contract a deadly disease just so his factory could be built quicker. As the virus raged on, Elon Musk tried again to repair his broken public perception by modifying Tesla's New York factory to stop making cars and start making respirators, to allow coronavirus patients to breathe more easily. Elon Musk had actually just bought a bunch of shipments from China of the wrong type of ventilator and then simply stamped the Tesla logo on them. Oh, and then he got coronavirus himself. Elon Musk is often dubbed as the real-life Tony Stark because Elon Musk is an eccentric tech genius just like Iron Man, but I disagree. At one point, Tony Stark actually stopped being a smarmy asshole and died a hero. No, Elon Musk is more like Winston Churchill, a deeply flawed, egotistic maniac who isn't even that good at leadership, who despite this goes on to be remembered by history as a hero because of his defining achievement. So while you know Elon Musk as the billionaire man-child who plays with space toys and tweets rubbish, future generations of Martians will look up at Elon Musk's statues in the city of Elongrad and thank him for founding the first Martian colony and being the first emperor of Mars. <laughs> <laughs>